me a Parsha story. Welcome to Parsha Pals. As we continue to look for ways to support our family in Israel, I am hopeful that this Parsha story can be a part of that by helping us grow our Torah learning and how we treat each other. Welcome. Welcome to our tent. What's your name? Oh, I'm Didan. Didan, you look thirsty and tired. You were just walking through this desert. We'd love to welcome you to our tent and serve you and take care of you. Make yourself comfortable. You relax under this tree, rest your weary feet, wash them off, relax, chill. We'll be back with some food for you shortly. And Avram and Sarah went into their tent and got right to work. They prepared such a beautiful meal for Dedan. Besides for the sparkling water that they gave to him to drink right away, they served him fresh fruit, pomegranates, figs, and dates, and scrumptious meat that they prepared, and fresh bread. Mmm, Dedan smelled it as they were preparing it, and then they came out and served him like waiters in a fancy restaurant, ready to give him more of whatever he needed. After the meal was over, Dedan, and by the way, this happened every day, more than once a day with many, many different guests that stopped by, Dedan said to Avram and Sarah, thank you. Thank you both so much. And Avram and Sarah said, why do you thank us? You don't need to thank us us. You haven't eaten our food. You have eaten the food that comes from Hashem, who created the whole entire world, who created the trees and the sun and the wind and the wheat. Everything comes from Hashem. That's who we must thank. Tadam was surprised. He had never heard anybody speak about Hashem before because during this time, people thought that a cow might be God <coughs> or they thought that they should dive into a tree. Tree, oh tree, please help me, nice tree. Sometimes they would dive into a rock. They never heard of Hashem. But Avram and Sarah taught them all about Hashem. And Dedan said, Okay, I hear what you're saying. Well, how should I thank Hashem? And Avram and Sarah would say to their guests, Well, you can say, Baruch Elokeinu She'achalnu Mishalo. Blessed is Hashem whose food we have eaten. And Dedan said those words, and then he left. Sometimes, though, guests would come, and they didn't quite get the lesson right away that Avram and Sarah were teaching about Hashem and where the food comes from. This happened one day when Rifat and Gomer came. And after they eat, ate a delectable meal filled again with, filled their bellies with delicious meat and freshly baked bread and fruit and the best service ever. When Avram and Sarah said, please don't thank us, please thank Hashem, they were like, what? <laughs> we do not know who Hashem is and we will not thank Hashem. You were the one who gave us the food and we will only thank you. How's that? And then Avram and Sarah would very politely say, if you think that you should thank us, 
very well. But please understand that if you are saying that the food you just ate belonged to us, please pay us. We cannot afford to give food away for free. Well, then how much do we owe you? Rifat and Gomer asked, because we do want to thank you. Avram and Sarah thought for a moment and said, well, let's see. You know, after we served you the sparkling water today, we served you wine. That would be 10 pieces of silver. The meat you ate, 10 more pieces of silver. That bread that you ate, five pieces of silver. Oh, and wait, we forgot about, almost forgot about all the fruit that you ate, the pomegranates, the figs, the dates, all of that together. That's another. Before Avram and Sarah could finish speaking, their guests, Rifat and Gomer said, what? What? So expensive? So much money? Who could afford to pay so much money for food? Avraham answered them and said, expensive? Actually, if you think about it, it's really not too expensive at all because you're in the middle of a desert. And who in the middle of a desert gives you wine for free and bread and meat and fresh fruit? You know, someone has to work very, very hard to raise this produce, the wheat, the fruit, and everything else. I'm sorry. We cannot sell them for less money. And then Rotem and Gomer, and this would happen on other days with other guests, would say, but, 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 but you said that this food came from, what was that? Lashem, Bashem, what was that? Amrit Sarah said, Hashem. They said, yeah, yeah, you said Hashem created the world, and that's where the food came from. You also said that, ha how do I say that again? They said, Hashem. Right. You also said that Hashem causes the sun to shine and the wheat to grow and the fruit to ripen. Not you. Mm. Avraham said to them, in that case, if you agree that only Hashem has the power to make all of this food come to be, and you recognize that the wheat that we use to make the bread and the beautiful fruit we served is all a bracha, a blessing that comes from Hashem, then please thank Hashem for his goodness and for providing this food and don't give us even one piece of silver. And Rifat and Gomer and so many others like them understood and then said, okay, so teach us how we do that. How do we say thank you to Hashem? Do we do a dance? Do we do somersaults? What should we do? What should we say? Please, please teach us. Teach us how to thank Hashem who created the world and this wonderful food. And Avram and Sarah would teach them and say, Baruch Elokeinu she'achalnu nishelo. Say thank you, Hashem, for giving us food to eat that you provided for us. And through the chesed, through the kindness of Avram and Sarah and the people that they served and hosted, they taught so many people to believe in Hashem. Because in the time of Avram and Sarah, people worshipped Avodazara, as we said earlier, uh -huh. cows, trees, rocks, metal. And this was something very new to them. And the beginning, people thought that Avram and Sarah were the ones that had it wrong and that everybody else around had it right. That's why the Torah calls Avram, Avram Ha'ivri. It's as if everyone in his time thought one way and he thought a different way. He figured out that even though we can't see Hashem or touch Hashem, that there's a Hashem that's running the world. And he and Sarah understood that. 
and try teaching that message to as many people as they could. They made it into a movement. They hosted people and taught them in that way. Avram built him his, would build him his beach and talk about Hashem and teach people in that way. And they were very, very strong, even though they were on the other side of everybody else. That's why he's called Avram Ivri. They were on one side. But even though everyone else was on the other side in their thinking, Avram and Sarah knew what was true, and they stuck with it, and they respectfully taught other people about Hashem. Next time you or I are in a situation where we feel like we know what is right, and people around us might be making a different choice and doing something that isn't right. Let's remember how strong Abraham and Sarah were. They were able to stand up to the different way. They thought differently than everybody else that was living in their time. And they stood up for what was right. They didn't give in to peer pressure. And they taught other people to believe in Hashem. And that is a lesson that we can learn from this week's Parsha and bring into our lives. May our efforts to do so serve as a zechut for our beloved chayalim and brothers and sisters in Israel. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.